and um, yeah, nice. Over here. Okay. Alrighty, then. I'll just uh, one guy's just pulled up downstairs. Let's wait a little, tiny few more minutes. I think there's such things at time. Yeah? He's been fishing the last week. The weather's been. Yeah. Are you good at? Did you? How'd you go, Sean? Oh, you asked for it. Actually, come good as a seminar we did. How'd you go, mate? Going by. Did you? Yeah. I love those tunes, they break rods and break gear. <laughs> yeah, couldn't go live, he's been yeah. live, he's been yeah. sort of mid-water surface, even downloaded. Yeah, right. Tune everywhere. And a big one's mine? Yeah. Yeah. yeah big and how deep were you fishing? Yeah. How deep were you fishing? 18 fathoms. 18 fathoms, okay. Straight at the front of those marks? Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So you'll see some marks in, in your bags there, guys, which we'll run through a little bit later. Um, but they're all good marks. Same as last week, Sean, they are. They're the pick of the bunch. Um, did anyone else get out last week at all? No, the weather was pretty cruddy. This Saturday morning might be an opportunity, maybe. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> Anyhow, guys, okay, so tonight we're going to talk about jigging. Um, we're going to talk about soft plastics. We're going to talk about um, Tibura type jigs, this type of thing. And we're going to talk about um, like normal type jigging type lures, slow pitch. And also talking about. Um, a little very quick talk on um, downrigger trolling for snapper as well. And uh, we'll pass stuff around as we go along. Um, now, so I've got the expert hand here, Jason Heller. Jason uh, and I fish a lot together. Jason is very good at uh, doing every type of fishing, but he's very good at jigging as well. Um, his specialty is a snapper, jewies, and whatever jumps on there, kings and everything else. But, um, and predominantly inside... Not, not like tuna. <laughs> <Not much. laughs> he well, sort of pulls the line away from those. <laughs> they, they get me as well. Yeah. Right, but predominantly in um in that sub the thirty six fathoms and inside of that. It's okay. So I'll be talking I'll have Jason a little bit, but I'll be talking more the outside edge of that. And I'll get Jason to talk about his uh what he does internally on all of the above. And um and then we'll show a little video of Jason's done has anyone followed Jason on, on uh, YouTube or anything at all? Oh, on on uh, are you following? Yep. I'm I'm not anywhere at the moment. I don't have a boat, so. Yeah, Jake saw his boat. So, if so you like what I'm talking about, I'm, I'm available for. <laughs> 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 water. Be careful! You'll get about ten guys a book in. I can tell you. <laughs> um, but so he's going to share his knowledge tonight with us, and um, and we'll go along as we go along, and then later um, we'll just get a normal scenario here how we do it, how we fish it, and um, and we'll see it on video, and then we'll talk a bit about why. So just a show of hands, how many guys here fish um, inside of, no more than 50 metres deep, so 24s? Okay, we'll go a bit further. A couple of you do fish to the 24s, 36s, okay, and 50,000 reefs. Okay, so we'll put most of the time, if you don't mind, in the back there into 24s and 36s, yep. and, um, and then we'll talk about 50s after that. And for those of you that fish the 36s, if your boat's at you know, around five metres, uh, on a good day, easily get out to the 50s, just make sure you're filled up, and uh, we'll teach you out there as well. Okay? Uh, but believe it or not, most of the biggest snapper are right in close. So most of the gear in your bags is small, because that's what the big snapper feed on, and, uh, and that's what we use in close. We're fishing very light outfits, like 20, 30 pound braid, even 15. Uh, and anything from sort of, uh, Flathead soft plastic size to your sort of snapper dot rods. Okay. And um, we'll talk about long rods and we'll talk about um, more soft tip, shorter type rods as well, which is the go for doing this type of fishing. Okay, so Jace, where would you like oh, to start? Fantastic. <laughs> you'll turn your up on sitting down. <laughs> <laughs> um, wherever you want it, whichever way you want to start it, you, you choose, mate. Alright, I'll put my glasses on. 
Um, so I'm happy with questions as well, guys. If, if, if I'm talking mm. about something and you, you want a little bit more info on it, just, just shout out and um, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll make something up. <laughs> so I just want to go any further. Yep. The important part. Yes. Okay. Uh, if you want to use the tools downstairs, back right hand side, uh, straight just underneath here. And if there's a fire or whatever, just go straight the front door, please turn it and slide the right side door open. Okay. Yeah, it's fine. <laughs> Don't be first out. <laughs> I'll go down the shoe. Uh, Jack's here. Thank you, Jack. Everyone's here now? Uh, no, still too busy. Still too busy. <coughs> busy in action. Okay. Oh, I hope the dog's out. You did just try ringing him. Sorry, John. Yeah, John. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Cool. okay so right. anyone, anyone here that's friends were coming tonight that did not turn out? Okay. <coughs> well, let's see. I'll sort it. Is there a um, Michael can't he? Yeah, is there a um, Oh, uh, yeah, they cancelled one. Oh, they cancelled Yeah, cool. Okay, fine. Good. <laughs> Alright, I'm going? You're up and I'm running. I'm going. Alright. Okay, any questions, just ask Jason. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. And then I'll yeah. ask Doug. Yeah, it's fine. Yeah. <laughs> um, Alright. I'm not sure if you guys are the same as me. Do, do, do many people just fish with lures? Or, or fish with lures? <clears throat> Everyone fishes with lures? No, yeah, yeah. never. No? <laughs> True. Yeah, okay, good. all right, no, no, cool, cool. Good for come along Yeah. yeah. Okay. Be because what, what I found is a few years ago, um, it sort of got really confusing because it almost seemed like every few months there was a new something coming out. You know, whether it was like plastics and then, the, oh, now we're on micro G's and now mm. we're on octa G's. And, and it sort of, I, I found it hard to sort of um, try and keep up with it mentally. You know, I felt like, oh, no, God, there's a new fad. There's something else for us to buy. <laughs> I'm going somewhere with this. <laughs> well, I don't and, invent these fads, by the way. No, no, I know you don't invent, invent them. But, um, but it, took, it actually took me a while to get my head around it, you know, and, and I actually thought about it probably a couple of years ago now. And, and what, I, what I relate it to is, you know, if, if you're fishing with bait and you're going out to catch, say, snapper, and you're specialising in snapper, you know, to give yourself the best opportunity, you don't just chuck a bag of pillies in your, in, in your rescue and off you go, you know, um, because they might not work every time you go. So, so, you know, if you were going, you might say, okay, I'm going to take some pillies and I'm going to take some squid, you know, I'm going to take some fresh baits and maybe a bit of mullet and I'm going to strip it down. And then you might fish with those baits on that day and you might find that, that um, oh, the squid was really working well today, you know, but last time I went, the pillies were working well. You know, so when I started thinking about that, I, I sort of came back to the lures and I'm like, well, it's sort of the same thing because because what you're trying to do with the with your artificial lures is you're trying to you're trying to uh, either imitate a fish or you you're trying to um, get a reaction bite out of them. And if you just use soft plastics all the time, you might not get that. You know, you might not get that reaction that you're after. And so so when we're fishing, um, you know. Uh, let's say if I'm fishing with my son, he might be using a, an octajig and then I might be using a vibe and then you sort of, you sort of find out what's actually working. And, and so once I, once I got that around my head, I thought, oh, well, it's probably not, it's probably not just a fad. <laughs> you know, and you can't have everything, but, but sometimes you, you, you do need to keep changing it to find out what's actually going to work on the day. The same thing with your bait. And so once I sort of started understanding that, I sort of became a little bit more comfortable with, with having lots of different things on the boat and uh, not just ch chucking plastics and think, oh, they're not biting today. I can see them on the sounder. Um, I can see them coming up to my lure, then turning away. You know, and if I'm seeing that, then, um, and I'm not getting the bite with what I'm using, then I'll start either changing up the technique um, or I'll change to uh, the micro jigs or the octa jigs. And, um, and a lot of times, yeah, you'll, you'll find you'll start getting the bites on a certain method. Uh, so, yeah, just maybe a different way for you to think about it rather than just thinking that there's so many things and what do I take? I need five rods for that. Um, yeah, so, so I'll probably start on... Um, I'll probably start on... Uh, how to present the lure first rather than the actual lure itself. Um, so, so I fish... Um, when I had a boat, in good old days. Uh, I, I fish in the back corner of the boat, okay, and I have my uh, Minn Kota at the front of the boat. Uh, one of the advantages of that is when you're, when you're um, reversing back onto your line, which I'll explain in a sec, you, you get a really nice clear picture out of your sounder. All right? when, when the conditions start getting a bit rougher and you're trying to you know, use your main motor to, to reverse into it, 
it'll cloud up a lot, um, depending on the boat. I mean, I know some boats M might have sounds a, to it. The, sounds yeah, I was going to say, I don't know if it does it with a through-hole transducer or something like that. But, mm. um, but yeah, so you get all that cladding. So using the Mincota is a definite uh, way I get like just pretty much a crystal clear picture all, all the time because uh, I'm not getting all that turbulence through there. How many boats do you have um, electric apples on the boats? Okay. Uh, electric uh, apple, like a encoder or something. Yeah, so a couple of you do. Um, yeah, so, so, so def definitely a good way to, to get a nice clear picture, picture there. Um, so I might start from the 36s and move my way in. Mm, that's fine. Yeah, yeah, okay. Um, so, so the main thing is, is to set up your drift. Okay, um, so you, you're either going to be, you can sound around and, and you might have a certain area you like to fish, but if you sound around and find some good bait and some good fish, or you might find a, uh, an isolated bommy that you say, okay, I, I want to fish on that. So your drift is going to be different to, if it's the same bommy you go to every time, it's going to be different every time you go back there, depending on the current and depending on the wind. So, so, so the, the best way um, I like to, to start fishing when I'm out there so I'll actually land, uh, or if I sound up some fish um, or bait, then I'll sit straight on top of that that mark where I want to actually eventually fish. Right? And then what I'll start doing is I'll start fishing as if, as if I was going to, um, uh, as if I was fishing back to this bunny. And the reason I do that is so I'm getting a track line on my on my GPS. So that track line will actually be my, my, uh, my track for the day, for, for that particular area. Meaning, so... Before you go any further, Jason, yep. that's okay. Just how many people here leave their track on when they're drifting on this on the GPS? Yeah, for those of you who don't, you should be all doing it. And you should never wipe it, just leave it on there so it becomes so infested with tracks. But every track designates the day of wind. So when you go out next time, you know exactly that reef and the wind's blowing in the same direction, which track to run on. So you have a track going that way to the northwest, that track going up on the northeast, and and uh, wherever it might be in the day. So then you know where to start and finish on that on that reef that you're at. I save a lot of time and a lot of a lot of frustration. Mm. Sorry. Yep. Just a question on that. So if you've got a you've got an encoder riding, yep. I'm assuming you've got a spot like so. If you spotted fish in a bolly and you can see fish on the bolly, yep. why would you drift as long as you just? Uh, I suppose I'm starting at a 36 at the moment. So the 36 is unless you had like no wind and like and no current. Um, you by the time you got down to your 65 meters, your lure would be sort of nowhere near yeah. the, the area where you actually wanted to be fishing. Um, yeah, so 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 yeah, ba basically that reason. Um, so okay, I get on the mark, and then I estimate about which direction I'm going to be be travelling, and I'll have my moon code. I have the foot control down on the floor of the back, okay, and I'll start reversing back on my line. I don't cast my line. I'll, I'll actually just drop it off the, to the side and then just let it let it free fall. Okay, and so as it, as it's free falling, um, I'll get down to probably one of the important things I probably needed to speak about first is if I didn't have the colour incremented braid, I don't think I'd go fishing. Okay, so every ten metres you've got another colour, right? So if if that's just like. Um, you, you know exactly where your lure is for lure fishing when you're using that particular uh, those particular braids. So when you're you're not using it, you go out there and it's just like you're fishing blind. You have no idea. You know, like yeah, you can drop it to the bottom and then wind it up a bit and sort of guesstimate about where you are. But if you see fish on the sounder, um, you want to either wind your lure up or drop your lure back to to where they are. And vice versa, if if you actually Get a fish hit on the way down, and you you know you um, you catch a fish on the way down as as your lure is wafting down. You want to look at your braid and know exactly what depth that was. So then you know that's about the depth that they could be feeding at on that day. So you start concentrating at that particular depth. So um, yeah, if you were to ever if you didn't have it, if there was only one thing you ever wanted to buy, it's it's that braid. Right, I don't sell braid. Yeah, so 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 su su super important. So, so I'll, I'll I'll start reversing back on my line, and I just let it free fall. So let's assume I'm in uh, say 65 meters of water. Um, I'll actually let that free fall to probably around 40 meters of water. Okay, and then after I get to 40 meters, um, 
I'll actually lift the rod, open the bail arm, close it, and then just guide it down. Okay, open, lift, and guide it down. The reason I do that is because um, from, from fishing these areas, I know I can catch good snapper from anywhere from about that, uh, 45 metres all the way to the bottom. So if, if you leave your bail arm open and, you just, and, it, and it's just free falling, uh, a lot of times they can just grab it and they're gone, you know, and then you'll be there trying to close your bail arm and you can't even close it a lot of times because they're running so fast, you know, that, that it just keeps going. Doo -doo 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 -doo. Um, there, there is a way where you can close it, you just quickly open and close and drop the rod. Uh, so you take all the pressure off really quickly and then, and then you can bang, click it in gear and you, you load it up. Um, but I sort of don't give that to chance. I, I sort of just get to that 40 metres, open, close and let it drift down. Open, close, let it drift down. Um, so I'll get a bit more into the techniques in a moment. But so I will drop that down and get down to probably around sort of the 55, maybe 60 metres. And then I'll stop fishing. So I call that my setup drift. Okay, so now I've actually been fishing and the whole time I've been backing up on my line, just keeping it either straight down or just that nice little 30 degree angle. Okay, any more than that and then, uh, you know, the lure can be sort of up off the, the bottom a bit too far. So I just sort of like to be remembering I'm sort of drifting back with it the whole time. So I don't want to be drifting back with my line out on this angle. I sort of want to be drifting back with it sort of either straight down or just so down a bit of an angle. Sorry, mate. So yep. you're doing about like 1.2 knots? Like what, what, you know, whatever, you luxury, yeah. You know, uh, what, 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 whatever it takes, you know. Yeah, um, so, so, yep. So, so, so I use three quarter ounce lures, yeah. Um, and so whatever it takes to keep that lure on yeah. that angle, yeah. you know. So, so some days I might drift a kilometer mm -hmm. and only get my lure to the bottom, maybe twice. Yeah. Okay. Some days I'll get it down ten times over that same span. Um, but, but I'm still able to fish by reversing up and then, you know, one day the, the motor might be in, you know, two or three or next time it's on seven and same with like, yeah. with, with your main motor, you do it a little bit faster um, just to keep, keep that actual angle on there. Um, but but the, the main point of that is to get that track on your GPS. Yeah, so, I was going to say, if, if you've got uh, like little icons marked on your screen and Jay's saying before you, it's very important to watch the sound and you actually can see your line on the sound that we have a good clean drift without the motor reverse. But if you've got, if you're on the same track and you've got more marks coming up, it's far better to actually sacrifice the blurry screen and reverse back knowing where the next mark is. Because keeping that contact down straight with your lines, you'll know, you get a hit straight away, don't you? Yeah, yeah, no, yeah. No, definitely. But if you're out like that, once it gets out of a different angle, it's very hard to get a hit. Yeah. Yeah, really hard. Unless the current's running, I've done it all right, I'm fine, I'm different angle out. Yeah, it's really ripping, but yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so, so now we've got our track, okay? So now that track might be for a couple of hundred metres or 500 metres, whatever it might be. Now you, now you can use that for your starting point for what areas you want to hit. So now you, you'll see your bommie <coughs> where you want it to fish or the bait or the, uh, the area you actually want to get your lure back down onto. Okay, and now you go, basically you can go straight back to that mark and just go straight ahead on the same angle of your your track, if I'm explaining that correctly. Um, so so now you'll know that, okay, I need to start a little bit to the left and, and there because I'm in a straight line with the track I just drew. And now you can start up there and start coming back to that actual bombing. Um, so this this is the way I'd, I'd actually attack a reef. So so if, if I get a fish there, or if I don't get a fish there, then I'll start slicing I just call it like sort of slicing the side away now, right? So now I've got a line here, and I say, okay, I'll go 20 metres to the right, and I'll just start 20 metres to the right of where I started that track the last time, and I'll get a line there, and I'll go to the step, and I'll go to the line there, and I'll go to the other side and get a line here and a line there. Um, so, so that's how I actually would be fishing an area, uh, i.e. the 36 and most areas as well. Um, any questions on that, or sort of understood? Yeah. yeah? Okay, cool. Yeah. For those of you last week, I did scenario, similar scenario with the drift pattern. So your first drift is your go-to, your second drift is on the inside, and the third drift is on the outside of the reef, but keeping it all within, as Jack said, in segments. Yeah. So yeah. you know, sometimes the fish are on that side, sometimes on that side, it depends on day. Mm -hmm. um, 
Um, okay, so. It's hard to get that line right. Sometimes they line up a harder thing. And I find, it, you know? it takes generally two drifts to nail yeah. it right, sometimes yeah. three. Okay. But then the wind will be, especially the yeah. wind yeah. it'll be northeast, the next one will go to the northwest a bit. And if you go, you got to start there, you should start over there. Yeah. And you drift off it, you know. So that's just the way it is. Um, yeah. But just reverse up, and quite often I'll say to the guys, just got the winding lines up, or just hang on, it's going to reverse, pull us over that way a bit. You don't have to go not 10 metres if you're back on with it. But the fish won't swim to you. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, so, 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 so definitely fishing when you're doing that setup <coughs> track. <clears throat> um, you know, you don't just go and sit on that bommie and then go around and start getting your gear ready, okay, and then say, okay, there's my track for the day. Because it will, will be completely different, obviously, once you start reversing back into it and all of a sudden you'll find that you're going on a completely different angle to as if you're actually just drifting on it. Mm, Okay, so so okay, so we'll talk about plastics. So, hence I'll I'll let that out and I'll let it down to around that forty odd meters, and then I'll just do my open bar alarm, closed bar alarm uh, scenario, and I'll do that. My when I'm targeting snapper, my first approach is always just that really finesse part of it. Okay, so I just want to just waft it down. Well, when, when I'm opening and closing that bar alarm, um, I don't want. I always want a little bit of a belly in the line, so I don't want it to like get tight and then I open it and it sort of jigs the lure, you know, and then close it again and it sort of jigs the lure. You just want it just naturally falling, and I'm just basically opening and closing it, just letting that continually free fall down. Um, <clears throat> and always watching my sounder. You, you will see snapper, um, you know, you'll see them coming up, you know, to, to have a look at your lure. So keeping an eye on your sounder and, and actually seeing how they are actually reacting to what's actually coming down to them um, and a lot of times you, you'll see it and you're like oh you know what do I do I'll just keep going and, and then they'll get up to it and then they turn away and you're like oh you know what, what was what's happened there and um, so then you know I'll, I'll only leave it let it do that a couple of times and, and if I'm getting that same reaction then I'll do a couple of things the, the first thing I'll do is I'll start um, start adding some action to my lure you know so if that's happening a, happening a, um, you know a couple of times then I'll really like really whack the lure, like really jig it really hard, and then just let it free fall down again. I right, saw so almost getting like an injured bait fish thing, and then you open the bail arm and it sort of just wafts back down. Um, <clears throat> in that 65 odd metre depth, I won't go any, any lower than about 60 metres. All right, so when I get to around that 60 metres, um, I basically will just wind back up again to around the 45. Um, and then just go again. It's the only time I ever really go lower than that, that sort of, that um, five minutes to the bottom is if things are really quiet and I see things down the bottom. Um, the reason I don't do that is because you, you do get a lot of the, 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 the shitty fish that will sit on the bottom. Um, I have caught good fish down there as well, but I sort of find that when the fish are feeding, they, they will come up anywhere from, you know, 10, 20, 30 metres they'll follow your lure up, right, as it's actually free falling. I actually have a few screenshots of that where you'll see the fish start swimming up off the bottom when I'm only like 10, 15 metres underneath the surface. And you'll see my line falling and you'll see the fish coming up and I'll get intercepted like halfway down. So they can see it. Um, so I, I, I prefer to add action to the lure and get that free falling thing up there to actually get the fish to come and actually grab the lure. Has anybody done that here before? Watch the line and fish meet together? Yeah, you've done it, mate. Yeah, yeah. The sounders do it. The sounders these days are fantastic, even the cheap ones. And, uh, and if you've got your sounder mounted right in your boat from the start, very, very easy to do. Um, the one thing, though, that is important is that it's got to be comfy up there. It's got to be in the zone right below your boat, sort of no more angle than that, you know? So it's a sound will pick up and watch the place. Right? Yeah, yeah. And then <clears throat> I, <clears throat> I use Lawrence um, and, and Simrad, um, but I always find a, a lot of times the 83 degree angle, the 83 uh, hertz, yeah. hertz, because it has a wider angle on it as well, so it'll pick, pick things up a little bit better. Um, where where the, the um, what's the other one? <laughs> uh, it's a 120, I think it's all yeah. 165. Anyway, the, the other one, one that it, it is a narrow narrow beam, so you're not going to catch your line. Oh, sorry, as well. Yeah, the, sorry, the 50 kilohertz. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The other one. Yeah. 
They keep changing. Isn't they'll 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 make it, make it they'll it's 15, 200, that's it. Mm. But that's um, strange. Yeah, so, so, so plastics are, yeah, are, are basically one of those things that, that I, um, I use. I definitely like using the gulps. Um, if I'm not using a gulp, if I'm using any other plastic, uh, which one of my favourites are these, but not in the colour, um, in the pink and the white. I do like the colour, but... Uh, <laughs> the yellow, sorry, the, 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 the yellow, and, yellow and the white, and the green. Um, I'll definitely be putting S Factor on it. Okay, or some type of scent, uh, and, and I'll do it probably every two or three casts. You know, I'll just I'll just lather it up. It's probably a little bit like using bait, but um, if I if I'm not using these, I'll definitely be using um, so don't use some, that some, some type yeah, some type of scent. Yeah. 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 It's very good. Yeah, it's it's got a um, pheromones in, so it makes the fish want to eat. Which one do you have? Yeah. Um, Gold <coughs> has it naturally though. So, so, so on the 36s, I don't play around with the size of the jig head too much. I use three quarter every day, all day. Right? Um, so it doesn't, even if the current's strong, as I was explaining before, it doesn't really make too much difference for you because you're reversing it up. It just, it just means that you're reversing up harder, but you still get the same, I find you still get the same drift okay, uh, of it falling down. Any lighter than that, it sort of starts taking a bit too long to get to the bottom. Um, any heavier than that, sometimes I feel that it's, it's sort of not just you know, wafting, wafting down as much as, as, as I'd like it to. Um, the, the size of the, the plastics I use, I personally don't use anything that big. Um, if, I, if, I, if, if I use that one, which is a seven inch, I'd actually bite a good inch of, of the head off the, off the front. Um, reason being is that I sort of find I get a lot of, you, you just get a big whack and you, you'll get a miss. Um, when I bite that off and you've just still got the small, just the small bite sized thing going down, um, I don't know, they must just get it all, all in their mouth and they're happy. Uh, so e even that size there is, is what I use for snapper. I know a lot of guys use um, uh, the, the bigger seven inch, uh, et cetera. Um, but yeah, yeah, this, this, I don't know, it's, it's definitely one of my favorite. I'm not just saying, it's just Dougie <laughs> but, but you get, I mean, I got a dewy on, on, on that size the other day, you know, when I was fishing for snapper. So, so, so they'll definitely come in, you know, I, I think it's all about just seeing the fish on the sounder, um, sort of just livening it up in their face and then just, just letting it waft down and, uh, and, and trying to get that reaction bite. Leader size, does? Hey, leader size. Um, I, I have a couple of rod setups. Uh, one of them is, is 30 pound uh, main line. And then I'll have, uh, I'll either have 20 or 30 pound um, trace. Uh, on my 20 pound rod, I'll normally just have 20 pound uh, leader. But most of the time I'll just fish 20 pound. Uh, I'll go to 30, like we're doing like a snapper comp or something like that, I'll go to 30 pound. Right? Um, and, you know, uh, I've, I can't even think of, it, of ever being bitten off before. Right? Um, so, Probably one of the things is when I catch a fish also, um, I don't run a super tight drag. I, I'm, probably like, I'm probably maybe just a little bit tighter than that, so you can come feel that later, but it's not tight, tight drag. But the main thing is when that fish grabs it, it's, it's whack, whack, as hard as you can, right? And just set that hook. Because, you know, you've seen inside their mouth of all the teeth and everything, you know, they get, it's like a flatter to whatever. They grab it and they hold on to it and they swim away with it, right? You think, oh yeah, here we go. And then all of a sudden they're gone. You know, you've really got to just try and rip it out of their head. And if, if it comes out of their mouth, it comes out of their mouth, right? Um, it's, it's not too often that it does, but you just really want to set that hook. You want to pull it out of their teeth and, and, and get a good hook set. Once you've done those couple of hard whacks, then you can't do anything else now, right? You just have to hold on. Um, but from there, I actually reverse back up. So I'll be like straight on at Minkota. I'll go straight to 10 and I'll actually chase, chase it down, just trying to keep straight over top of it. Um, and and try I, I try not to go too hard on them, um, just because the, the harder you go on a fish, the harder they're going to go. You know they're going to try and bury you down into the bottom a lot a lot better. Um, but yeah, and and we'll always be absorbing the head knocks as well, right? Because you never know how how good the the hook hook set is. So every time you you feel the head dips start, start to go down, I sort of always dipping the rod with it and just absorbing that to uh, to try and. Try and hold it on there. Um, 
paddle tails. I don't use paddle tails um, of, of the, the larger variety out on the 36s, anything like that, myself. It just takes way too long to get to the bottom. Um, I, I, I more so use just, just a, as a jerk shad style um, with, with, yeah, just with no, no tail action pretty much. And you're just going for that natural approach, which is probably the most important thing with snapper. You just really want to be natural. And then if, you, if they're not taking it, then you, then you impart action into the actual plastic itself. Um, are, you, are, you, excuse me, sorry, are you just using like a lippy's loop on the... Yes. On the, yeah. Yep, yep. yep. Yeah, so I just use yeah, just a loop knot on my, on my, <coughs> my, on my jig head, just, just to, so it's nice and free. Make sure that the loop head's not too big. Right, and just make a nice little tight loop knot. Less right. than five centimetres. <clears throat> because sometimes if, if the loop knot's too big, it can, it can uh, probably this one is. Yeah, see that one's too big. That was done in a hurry. <laughs> <laughs> it, can, it can fold back over top of the jig head, right, and get caught up in there. So, uh, yeah, that one's, I did that one to show you what not to do. Yeah, so, so definitely a tight little uh, loop knot on there. What, what weight is that? Uh, that one is a quarter ounce. So that was more in close to those. Mm. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. So, 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 it's all different sizing. So. Yeah. So, so the quarter ounce, that, that, that's, that's what I'll use anywhere from the 18s to the 24s. To use a quarter, use Yeah, yeah, I'll use a three quarter on that. Yeah, yeah. It, it does, doesn't look the best. Um, it, it's not my go to out there uh, in the 36s. But, but it will go on. Uh, remembering that, that I'll, I'll use something like that five inch and I'll still bite a little bit off the top of that as well. Right, so, um, but yeah, I mean. <coughs> I'd recommend the yes. scissors rather than five inch. Yeah. Well, they taste, <laughs> but, but they taste so good. Yeah, they taste. <laughs> um, <laughs> I, I, I'm not a big curl tail person um, <laughs> out on the 36s. <laughs> uh, mainly because it's such a long way down and you've, you've gone to all this time to set your drift up, um, the curl tails can come back around and hook onto the hook. So you, you don't know, you're down there and you're working your lure and you're like, oh, this all feels good. And you wind it back up and it's, like, it's looped around onto your thing. You're like, oh my God, how long have I been doing that for? You know, so, so that's why I just go for the jerk chat style. Um, uh, it's mainly for that reason. Uh, when I'm in closer and it hasn't, I have, don't have as far to go, um, to wind it up and wind it down and it's not, not as important the drift's not as fast when you're in closer, uh, so you know, yeah, you can drop it and, and have a few hops and a bit of a drift, and it's not far to wind it up to check it to do it again. So if you're biting the head off, yep. the, the five inch, yes. What size hook? Uh, still, still uh, three quarter. I look uh, either a five o or or five o or even sometimes a six o. It looks oh, really? it looks a bit weird, right? Yeah, um, yeah because you've got this big hook Tumble coming out. Is it yeah, mm -hmm. um, yeah. I, it's, it's, so, so I'll either have the so six O or five O. Like if you do on a five, you are running a four or a three. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's too yeah. small. It's yeah, well, that's right. You know, it's like with head. with flathead the same. You know. <laughs> 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 so, <laughs> the trouble is, the trouble is, the body's too big. So the hook's too small. So you haven't much hook exposed. And yeah, yeah. So that's, that's why they've got race on They're probably too. Yeah. yeah. You know, they're all laughing for a reason. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so, same with like flathead. You know, you see how big their mouths are. Yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm six o all day long. And even so, so you're actually probably going for like either the same size, like five with the five all coming up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So yeah. That's three, three, it's five, five inch. Oh, five o, sorry. Seven, yeah. seven, seven o, even. Yeah, no, that's wrong. Yeah, yeah. So the more hook you can have coming out, and, and never, never get worried about. Oh, you know, they're going to see the hook. Now you've got a big jig head on the front of it too. You know, a big bit of lead going <laughs> yeah. down. Oh yeah. You know, it's like <clears throat> even when we start talking about like micro jigs and all that. Yeah. I mean, they're, they're going for that sort of stuff. So, so a little bit more hook hanging out the side. It's better insurance for you, and you're not after the small fish anyway. So you know, you want the big one with the big mouth to come and grow it, and you want to make sure that you whack, whack, and and just just buried and. If you don't have a um, encoder <laughs> and you're setting your first line, yep. do you just run the drift then? Uh, no, no, you st still do it exactly Back the same. Motors go the whole time. Yeah, so, you just, um, just motors go on the time and you just, just keep reversing up on it and letting your line down. You might not see the sounder as well, but you'll get your track line on there. <laughs> um, you'll go off your mark quicker. Sorry? You'll go off your mark quicker. Um, 
No, it should still be the same. Oh, same. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Look, look for, for, for the first, you know, five, six, seven years without a encoder, I used to just use, that's how I get so many hours on my motor, just running the whole time, you know. And uh, so, yeah, I was always just reversing up, reversing up. And just make sure when you're reversing up that you trim your motor up a little bit. You know, so, so when, if it does get a bit rough, you don't want your motor down like this because when it goes down, it can actually pull you back down that way. Yeah, yeah. Right, so just to always trim it up a bit. So, yeah. <laughs> just from a safety perspective, you know, just to, just to have it there like that. Um, that's leaders, that's line, plastics, hooks. Um, any colours, I, I'm a big white person and I'm a Lumo person. Um, not not nitro chicken. Uh, oh no no the no the uh, nuclear chicken. Nuclear, nuclear chicken. Sorry. Yeah yeah yeah. yeah. Uh, look yeah my, my, my son used those. Um, a mate of mine used them. I, I think it's. I think. Oh, it, I told you, but yeah, <laughs> similar. Yeah yeah. yeah. I, I think it's good to to change them up just to see like if don't use the same colour as your mate on the side of the boat. But if he starts catching more than you, then, <laughs> then, <laughs> then definitely <laughs> take them off him. <laughs> So you should have bought your own. It's always um, the last one that he's got. Yeah, <laughs> but they definitely change to that. So I, I'd never like to start with the with the same colours on both sides of the boat. Always start with something different. Um, and and if you can start with a with a different lure reach, uh, a different type of lure reach, then that that's good as well. Um, I'm not a. I'm, we normally do start with plastics, both of the times. Um, but a lot of it won't take. It only take a, a one or two drifts and say, okay, let's change. One person change, you know, and then just try and find out what what you might um, go for from that. Um, Minutes. Micro jigs. <laughs> okay, uh, micro jigging. Uh, so, so once again, j just think of it like, like okay, if they're not, I've gone to all this effort and I've I've, I've changed it up, I've added some action to my lure and I'm still not getting the bite but I can see the fish down there and they're coming up and they're looking, you've got to change to something else and um, definitely, this is not my go-to first, I go to an octojig first but we'll talk about micro jigs first. Um, these do get to the bottom really, really quickly um, <clears throat> and depending, obviously the wider body ones are more the flutter style, okay, and then the, the narrower ones will get you to the bottom quicker Okay, but they're not as much of a flutter. It's more of you know just a, a, a bit of a, f a flick on them to get them sort of darting left and right, um, <clears throat> where these will sort of flutter down. The way you get them to flutter is you don't have any tension on your line. Okay, if if you're feeding it down, um, and you have tension on your line, a lot of times these lures will sort of just you'll just guide them down. And they'll just head down like this. Okay, so, so you can do that up into that 40 metre range, like what I was saying before, and, and then you can open bar arm or, or just, you just, just open it straight up and just, just let it flutter down. Um, I, I don't use that type of rod. Um, I actually bought the wrong rod tonight, but... Um, oh, actually, no, this is the one. <clears throat> different rib, different reel, different size line. Um, but, but, but that's a micro-jigging rod. Um, so they're obviously very, very light in the tip, and... But that is rated like I think like a 200 gram jig or something like that, maybe even more. Uh, they look really light, but I can tell you that it, oh, th this is rated. I think it's 12 kilo drag pressure, at, uh, and that's drag pressure at 60 degrees. So, so you can they can handle big fish, but they just don't look like it. Any small fish, and they feel horrible. Um, so the bigger the fish, the better the rods feel. Now, with with the micro jigs. I basically just let it let it go down to the bottom, okay. Let it fluttering, watching the colours on my line, and then when I get to an area where I've seen fish or I've, um, where they're coming up to or where there's bait, I won't go right into the bait. If I go right into the bait, then you've got more chance of ca catching all those little fish. I'll stay above the bait again, and then I'll just do like just big rod, rod lifts and then quickly drop it, and um, just let. Let yourself get that belly in the line because when you get that belly in the line, now you know it's fluttering. Um, <clears throat> that's for me. That's yours. No, yeah. thank you. <laughs> um, play around with them and the, the, the jigs in the pool. If you've got a pool at home or go somewhere with a bit of water where it's clear where you can see it, and, and you'll, you'll see straight away. I'm talking about, you know, just, just 
you know, take a couple of different jigs down and you can see the different actions they have. So that's super important than sort of just going there and go, oh, they said my jig it. <laughs> yeah, jig it up and down. But if you can actually visualise what it's, what it's doing, um, when you're lifting the rod and quickly drop, dropping it down, you'll see if you guide it down, you won't get that flutter, right? So you've just got to keep that little bit of belly in the line and then you'll see the lure sort of just go off to the side. You won't see the pictures on the boxes and they're like, oh, they say they flutter, but I've never seen it flutter. <laughs> and, uh, but yeah, that, they do flutter if you take that line, if you take that pressure straight off them. Um, but if your lead is too heavy or something like that, then that, that might sort of be hanging them up a little bit as well. Um, so I'll just get above the bait or around where I'm seeing the fish and just lift and then just let it drop and lift. It. I need a new rod. <coughs> um, and, and let it drop. Okay, and then, and then just wind it up. Uh, you can actually just do like quarter winds or half turn winds, um, which when you wind it, you'll see the rod tip go down. Okay, so when you wind it like that, and then the rod tip bounces back up again, so that's giving you action that way. So you can just sit there and go, okay, up, dun, 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 slower or whatever, and, and then just, just bring that lure back up, and then you can just let it free fall back down again. <clears throat> um, sometimes you'll see fish coming up to it as well. So it's always a bit hard at that stage. It's like, what do I do? Do I just keep going or do I stop and do something else? And normally you do the wrong thing. It's, it's normally when you don't see it and you hook it up and then you turn around and you go, oh, there it is, it's coming up. So you're probably better off just to keep doing the same thing as what you're doing if you are seeing a fish coming up. And um, yeah, so micro jigs, yeah, look, look they, 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 are, they are awesome on their day. Um, but like anything, like with your pillies or your, or your squids sort of thing, you know, one day they'll go for this and the next day they'll go for that. So it's just a matter of sort of, crossing all bases as, as you um, uh, as you go with the types of lures. Um, <clears throat> some of them do have uh, two, like a hook on the top and a hook on the bottom. Um, I, I'm, I'm not a, I don't really care, care which one I use. Sometimes they do get hooked up a bit um, on each other, uh, but I would normally just, yeah, tie to the solid ring and then you've got your little hooks off to the side and you, and you, you jig to the other side. Um, I do tie it to the bottom end sometimes, but that's when I'm in shallow water, when you, when you can cast it right out. And then you have your... Um, it works so, well that way. Hey? It works well that way. Yeah, yeah. So, so, so if you've got your, your jig and then you've got the hook dangling out this way, so you tie it to this end when you're in shallow water, and so, so that's how we'll chase dewies a lot as well. So you just you just cast it out, and you let it get to the bottom, and then you sort of just hop it, and you just hop it back, and you can imagine it just going like this, you know. And so the fish comes up behind and grabs it. Where if you're vertical jigging up and down, then tie it to that solid loop up the top. When you do so catch a shallow, on these things too. Yeah, 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 all the time. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> that's all right, mate. We do it. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. Look, look, look. They're, they're good for covering ground. You know, you go out to the bait reefs or something like that, and um, you know, you go out there like just on dusk or just when it's there. And they're a little bit like flathead. They, you know, you've got to cover that ground. So if you can cast way over there and just hop it back to yourself, just knowing that it's around that meter or two meters off the bottom. Every now and again, let it get touch the bottom again, so you know where you are, and and just keep going around in circles like that. Um, yeah, rather than just sort of straight up and down. Uh, yeah, de 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 definitely a, a, a go-to. Um, it's great for tackle sales doing that too. Yeah. 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 yeah, but see, the bait grounds too, there's most a lot of sand around, so if you can yeah. be around that little bit of reef, that, then you can quite comfortably let it go down the bottom because it's mostly sand around there anyway, so... Um, yeah. So when you say in shallow, you sort of like... Do it Sub 30 metres, right? Or less. Yeah, 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 anywhere from... Well, the bait grounds, what's the bait grounds? That's about... 25. 25 is it? Yeah, so anywhere from there for sure, definitely. Um, what, what, what braid and leader would you be using in that trip? Um, 15 and above. 15 pound above. What's that for the, for, for the jewies or the. Oh, for, for the jigging. Oh, yeah. for the jigging. Yeah. Um, about the same. I have probably 20 pound or 30 pound. Yes, yeah, so I have another reel, same, but, but with 30 pound on it. Because I'm using the. Uh, you know, the better, the, the more expensive, <laughs> the thinner the diameter of the braid is, right? Uh, so there's always a bit of a catch-22, but, but you're better off to have the, the finer braid 
uh, and a bit of insurance having the, the, the bit stronger line. And when that's going down, if there's a bit of current or a bit of wind, you just have so much, so much uh, better contact with your lure when it's going down when that, that line is a lot finer. Yeah, you, and you can feel just every little tap. You can you know, feel a fish deep, you know, just tapping on your lure as, as, as it goes down. Um, yeah. Is that just a bay caster in or a kitty reel? It's a little bit beefed up bay caster, so it's actually right. a micro jig reel. Right. They can use it for like um, big uh, swim baits and stuff like the cod and stuff. Okay. Yeah. But predominantly it's designed for um, yeah, micro jig. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, so yeah, I have one I use for snapper as well, and then and then, but this one's got fifty pound on it, which I'll be using like for heavier, heavier fish. I think they've got like eleven, 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 11, 11, 11, okay. 11 kilos. Yeah, oh, eleven kilos. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So so they really can yeah, be. Yeah. They like the tranks. They don't cast like a bait cast a little lure very well. Yeah, I was just wondering because I've yeah. got a bait cast. I was like, shit, maybe I'm using the wrong one. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. What do you reckon about actually a jigger for the Very good. Is that like the pinnacle or? It's the pinnacle, yeah. So the, fi the fifteen hundred is like the go to out to hundred meters deep. The air to hundred meters deep and the two thousand sort of um, anywhere from sort of sixty meters to two hundred or three hundred meters. Oh, you can get right off that. Yeah, yeah, and then they do four thousand, which is uh, the four thousand sort of hundred meters to five hundred meters deep. Um, one of my other super favourites would be my my definite go to after soft plastics is the Octajigs. Right, um, <clears throat> deadly. So your preference is plastic. Good. Always go plastic first. Yeah. Yep. Um, the last two seasons, because I haven't really fished much this year, um, boat reasons, um, I caught more bigger fish on Octajigs than I did on plastics. And I might start with plastics and get it, you know, get, get a few fish, and then and then I, um, and then I'll go to octajigs, and um, so deadly. And the embarrassing thing about them <laughs> is you don't have to do anything with them, right? Uh, the, the way I fish these the best is I have my rod holders out to the side of the boat. I'll drop uh, two different depths. If I'm in 65 meters, I might have one at about sort of 55 and the other one at probably um, maybe 45-ish, so about 10 metres apart, and then you just stand there. And then you just, and, and, and you just, <laughs> <laughs> and, and I'm just yeah. there with, with the Minn Kota, yeah, and you're just like, I'm just reversing back, just watching both, watching both rods, and they just buckle. So yeah, the last two seasons, I caught more fish B bigger price. quality yeah, fish. Yeah, yeah. 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 On, 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 and and, and on, on, on these ones as well. I, I don't really care for the colour. Uh, I don't think it's about that. I think it's. Um, I think it's. Look, look, they were designed to go in the boat in, in, in the boat rod holders. You know, and I can tell you, I, I've I've used them before, and and I do work them with my lure as well sometimes to see that. I think they do it the yeah. same, Doug. You know, you can just. <laughs> You can just slow retrieve them, okay, or, or you can just do that little half retrieve on, on the reel and the skirt sort of goes like this as it's coming up, or just slow winding it and the, the skirt sort of just shimmies as it sort of comes out of the water. Um, but I find the best way is to do nothing. One there, one there, different depths, keep reversing back and just keep slicing away at that reef and um, absolutely deadly. I know Jace caught Jill on those two. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, no, definitely. Yeah, yeah, just that Same vertical deal. to thirty Same degree deal. sort of sort of angle. Yeah, yep, yep. Uh, uh, that that size you're using like inside of uh, fifty meters, yeah, which is the best area to use, by the way. Yeah. You get a lot of demersals, like um, as Jay said before. You get a lot of sergeant bakers and rock tods and Moses birch and everything else in there too. But the sample love them, you know, and so the Jewies everything else as well. Yeah. yeah. Uh, in, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Look, look I'll, I'll use them up to about 24 fathoms. fathoms. Um, you, you, you can use them uh, deeper, but the, the, the conditions have to be pretty good. You know, um, I'd be going to like a 40 or, or, or even an 80, you know, when you get out to that, that uh, deeper water because uh, you, just really want, you just really want contact with them, you know, and you're not trying to do anything special apart from just hold them in those particular zones. And, um, and you don't want to be backing up too fast because the lines are going out too far. 
So yeah, so probably I'm at 36 to, to deeper. Yeah, around that. 40 to 80, 40 to 80 is, is definite. Um, a definite go-to. And the hooks are super strong. They normally just get them in the lip and and um, so you don't set the hooks or anything with these. All right, they just bend and they go and then and you just, just take it nice and easy. You never really know if they're like just pinned on the... I don't think I've ever lost a fish on one. So they're yeah, always yeah. double hooked in the lips. Always. You think 40 grams? 40 fish 40, 36 yeah. Is, yeah. No, 40 yeah. But, but these ones def de definitely in close. Um, that should not be a most in top one. Hey. One of those, uh, those ones here in the 40s, isn't it? 80, 40. Oh, oh yeah, 40. Just got to pass it around. I'll pass a couple of these around, guys. These are, uh, these are 40 and 80 grams. This is a new one out, so um, goes to the two of them, but it's um, just a bit of Sorry guys, these are the new slides too. I think they have a sign actually, I don't know if the Japanese are signed which are the gurus I'm digging, or the um, New Zealanders, but Kiwis, okay, Kiwis. But um, how they work, there's a couple of ways they work. So one is you just use like an octo jig and the head sits straight on top of your skirt. Um, the second way is the you actually Put your, make sure your line's got a fairly easy coming up the spool. You put it in a free spool. You hold the hook section with the skirt on it and you drop the head, okay? The head goes down to the bottom, down towards the bottom. You see it falling on the sound, it's just a neutral. It's going down, the motor's going across. If it gets a little bit out of it, just back up a little bit. When it either hits the bottom or when you count the colours that it's near the bottom, like 60 metres, like Jay said, or 40 metres, you then drop the hook rig and the hook rig will start going down very slowly. but you know, all the time when you're using plastic or whatever it might be, you do the lift, but when you do the drop, that's when you get the hit, right? It's the same scenario because that skirt is sliding down, so the hit's on the fall. Um, so you can either do two things: is you let it free fall slowly, catching up to it, or you start winding it and pulling it back through the head. So the head stays on the bottom, but the hook's getting pulled down to the head. And as that's free falling, I it looks like a little fish or whether it's emulator, I don't know. But they just nail it. They nail it on the fall before you. So all of a sudden, if it goes slack, sometimes they hit it, starts from back up. You got to catch up to it, or they'll just run out and you feel them straight away. But um, so there's two different ways of technique of using. You call it like a slide ball style. Um, yeah, the style. This is a dock a, a dock can. So this is a Rapala item, but obviously designed by old mate from um, you know the Gamoku dude, the you know the guy I think he is, or Malay or something. He's, Crazy jigger. Anyhow, they come in um, 40s as small as I think 120s the biggest. You would have saw the other day, um, if you, any you guys followed Mick Corny, a couple of big jewies he bought on the blocks up here. That was on those. And he was working those, same style technique. And actually, I was out there right next to him, so yeah, I saw it. Like, <laughs> <laughs> two blocks away. Two blocks away. Yeah, Liam got that one, that was a 14 kilo. Yeah, yeah. We got one right here too. <laughs> Um, but it's got a lot of uh, that sort of fish caught on the front, out the front here as well. But oh, so, so vibes. Vibes, <coughs> Def yeah. Definitely, definitely yeah. vibes have their day as well. Um, so definitely, I, I was saying to Doug, I don't like using them out on the 36s mm. <laughs> because, Understand. once again, such a long way to drop down, yeah, just they get looped up on themselves and then you, you get it all the way and you think, okay, I'm in the zone now and you go to vibe and there's nothing there. And you're like, so you wind it all up and do it again. Yeah. So so w when you're in that closer closer uh, you know, that, that 25, 35, 45 metres, it's not so far to um, you know, you can sort of can cast out of it and just let it go down and then start vibing it back. And if it doesn't get hooked up, it's not yeah, not so far to quickly bring it back to the boat and, and do it again. Um, but yeah, de def definitely the vibes. When we brim fish, brim fish. <laughs> I think they're very similar to snapper. Uh, you know, they're just really finicky sort of things. And one day they'll take this and the next day they won't. And definitely when we when we fish for broom, it'll be like one will use a plastic and one will use a vibe, right? And then one day they'll all be on the vibes and then next day they'll all be on the plastic. So then we'll swap over. We'll both both use the same thing in the boat. Um, so yeah, so vibes definitely, definitely work well for the... For the so, um, so two things like Jay's the same on um, the vibes, they... If you do very slow action with the vibe and, and let it fall and let it swim back down 
at a slower pace, which isn't as good as fast pace, it's good for natural, but um, you will never get hooked up. Uh, and same with your, um, the talk, before you talked about the um, your normal sort of um, slow pitch jigs, if you put the hook top and bottom, you have to do it very slowly. So whether you just lift it up slowly, let it fall slowly, but keep it controlled. But if you do the fast jigging or the fast fiving, um, they'll hook up, the second set of hooks always hook up off the line. And as Joe said, you have one up 65 metres, you know, you just wasted 10 minutes and the hot bike. <coughs> yeah, yeah, and, and gone over your drift, so yeah, yeah, you've got to start it all over again. Yeah, yeah, 20 minutes. Yeah, 20 minutes. Um, any back questions on? Jigs, yeah. Would you ever put your assist hooks on the front and the back as well? That, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. If you do slow, slow yeah, type up. lifting and, and let it fall back down. If you do, put yeah. them on. Yeah, you have to do that. But if you get anything fast, it's going to start catching up to the to the yeah. line. So you just, it's all over. So you just keep your back ones on, and don't put anything on the front. Ah, uh, you put them on the top ones on. Oh, the top, top ones, ones. Yeah. Yeah, because yeah, it always yeah. hits the line and slides back down. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm not a fan of them both ends. Uh, I, no. I normally just like it either, either all at the top or tight from the other end and just have them down the other back. Yeah, awesome. Yeah. Double assist hooks and just get them dragged on the way. Or you get them back and never come on. Yeah, you can just get them back and never come on. Yeah, you can get them back and never come on. Yeah, you can just get them back and never come on. Yeah, you can just get them back and never come on. Yeah, you can just get them back and never come on. Yeah, you can just get them back and never come on. Yeah, you can just get them back and never come on. Yeah, you can just get them back and never come on. Yeah, you can just get them back and never come on. Yeah, you can just get them back and never come on. Yeah, you can just get them back and never come on. Yeah, you can just get them back and never come on. Yeah, you can just get them back and never come on. Yeah, you can just get them like sort of rule for what size micro jig you use for what depth water? Um, yeah, look, 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 probably around that, anywhere from that even 10 to 15 to probably 20 grams is what I'd use and on that sort of 18s to, to 24s, um, probably up to, yeah, up to maybe 30 grams. Um, that this is for myself. And then once I go out to 36s, probably around that 40 to 60 grams. Um, is, is, is what I would use. So remembering I'll, I'll use a three quarter ounce um, yeah. on, on my jig head, uh, which is 20, 20 or oh, less 26 grams or whatever. Um, so yeah, so anywhere around that sort of 40, 30, 40, 50, up to 60. Um, yeah, definitely there. I, I find the, the lighter they are, the, the more nice little action you get out of them. Do you still get like a decent size fish on a 20 gram jig? Because obviously that's like such a like like Yeah, the, well, I mean, yeah. I mean, yeah. Also, I mean, like, like you look at that plastic, or you look at the five-inch plastic cut down. I mean, it's, it's really only this long. Anyway, so, yeah. yeah. Um, What's that? We would use like hundred gram jigs. Uh, the slow jigs. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So two things you should do there. One is back up, and second thing is um, get dinner braid. So you shouldn't be using more than about probably fifty pound max, but thirty preferably. Well, we can use thirty pound. Yeah. Yeah. Are you still getting? Yeah. Are you backing up though? Uh, no, 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 right. What's it called? The the Shimano jig. Yeah. Um, the blue packet. Yeah. Oh, so you're backing up though on the on the. I've come I've come to realise this may be the issue. That's the issue. It takes me a little yeah. bit more to set up than. So many float on for snapper baits. You've got to back up. It's got to be that. Close it's switch. it's like it's like turning a switch on. Okay. For the fish. Yeah. Yeah. As soon as they feel that that slack line, that's more natural. Like Jason keeps yeah. saying. Yep. They just nail it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. De 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 definitely have to be backing up. Yeah, yeah, hundred percent. Backing against it. Yeah, it depends on the day. Yeah, because generally you're back into the wind more than anything more than current. Yeah, so you will back, you're back into the current your sometimes. Your line yeah. keeps yeah. pulled out. Yeah. You're backing into that. Yeah, yeah. You're, try, you're trying to catch so up on your line. Yeah. What happens a lot of time with the current is the boat actually drifts faster than the line at the bottom, so the boat overtakes the line. So you have to oh, back it up a little bit and just try and keep it. Zone. Yeah. Like the boat, yeah, the boat overtakes the line. Yeah. Yeah. There's always wind assisted as well. Yeah. Uh, but sometimes the wind is against the current and it's straight down or may have to actually cast it up. Uh, yeah. Down current if it's yeah. stronger than the wind. So I'm backing into the line and it's getting dragged out. I'm just backing in. That's right. It's yeah, so it's like you're chasing it down. Yeah. yeah. yeah so you're just tracing that line, you know, to, 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 to make sure it's coming back down, down onto you. Um, yeah, but <coughs> even with flat guys, whether it be in just three metres of water or 300, it doesn't matter, you're the back end. Yeah. How often do you use that piece of plastic? This one? Yeah. Look, sometimes I'll get one fish out of it, sometimes I won't even get a fish, sometimes I might get three fish out of it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean... Uh, do you use it next time? Oh, 100%. 100%. Yeah, yeah. Except yeah. for the golf. Yeah. The golf's are a little bit... 
Um, I mean, yeah, yeah. So it's a bit hard to use. E even if I lost the tail on it, I'd, I'd still chuck that down. Well, they bite the tail. Yeah. Yeah, like, like if, yeah. Stack it. I mean, our tail would do. Yeah, like if a little shit fish would come and. That actually, that bit it and the pink one, the, or the big one you have for Jack, uh, the, uh, sorry, with the paddle tail, we cut those tails off and just use it like a. Oh, yeah, yeah. Like that style. Yep. Very good. Yeah. yeah. So, so, so d n never be scared to adjust your lures when you're out there by either biting the head off or if you're dropping it down and you really want to use this one and then it's just taking too long to go to the bottom. Um, I'll, I'll trim it and make a real tiny little paddle tail or I'll just bite it straight off. Um, or even then sometimes I'll get my scissors and I'll just split it up so it's like a little fork tail. Um, you, you don't have to, if you're not happy with that particular one because it's not suiting the conditions of the day, then uh, yeah, just get your scissors out and s start going to work on them. Um, yeah, mm. yeah, definitely. Um, down rigging? Down rigging. Is, is there any more questions on any of that? In, this is inside, 36 percent inside of it. Any questions? Pro pro probably another way when you're in closer. Uh, I suppose there's a couple of different techniques. We're talking about backing down there. But um, what I do enjoy doing too is uh, like you'll, you'll drive around and if, if I see fish, then I'll spot lock if I'm, if I'm in closer water. And then, um, yes, I'll see fish there. I'll spot lock on it <clears throat> and I'll just work out with my cast and I'll just cast it right out and just let it try and drift down into that area where the fish are. Um, once again, I think they're a little bit like brim. You know, you, it, when you're doing that sort of thing, I, I find they shut down a little bit quicker. You know, so, you know, you might be really lucky to get a second fish out of there. Um, and then I'll just keep mosing around until I find some more and I'll <coughs> spot lock on there and I'll, I'll just do a couple of casts again just until I get that, that right drift down on it. Uh, once again, if I'm not using gulp, gulp I'm 100% um, using some sort of scent on it. Um, yeah, just, just lather it all up probably every two or three casts. Would you use scent on even like male jigs and everything? Yeah, 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 definitely. I, I don't use them on the octoskirts because on the, on the octajigs, especially these ones, because they're so fine, it can it can clog them up a bit. Right. Yeah, so I, I did start it, I put some on the head and then by the time the skirt goes all over them and they get all cluggy and they, yeah, yeah, they sort of, they don't, don't work how they should you how they should work. Um, so that's definitely another, another way that I, I would um, fish in close or you can even drift um, with, with a, a lure set at different depths. You know, if it's a really slow drift that day and the wind's not too much, and you can just leave the, the, the plastics at that depth and the boat's going up and down and the plastics are going up and down, a little bit like the octajigs. How long do you use your bias then? Hey? How do you use your bias? Uh, probably the same. Uh, either, either, a, either a spot lock uh, situation um, or if it's a nice slow drift, I'd cast out and then uh, either watching my colours and then... If you're not really sure, you're like, oh, yeah, am I, I going to hook up on the bottom? <laughs> All right, uh, but I'd, I'd count my colours out and then, and then just let it come back down to me. And then just as I'm drifting, I'd, I'd just, yeah, just vibe it. Are you still working it. up to that column to that technical note? Uh, no, no. Back down? No, I, I, I don't really because uh, I'd be using them in closer. So I yeah, sort of hang around that 10 metres off the bottom. Yeah. You know, because uh, I find that's where the better fish come from is, you know, is, is off the bottom. And if you're just vibing it through that through that area, um, you know, dropping up and down a couple of metres, you know, if there's a fish five metres below it, which means five metres off the bottom, he's going to come, he's going to swim from me to you, you know, to, to go and get that, or he's going to swim from there to there. So I don't really work the water column as much with the vibes. Yeah. yeah. Mac too does love when close. Um, oh, quickly, does anyone have a downrigger? Yeah, a couple there. Um, just quickly tell you about it, it's a really way to fish and it's, and it's very enjoyable and a great learning curve for um, finding new reef, which is actually going quite slow. Yep. So you really see the definition on the bottom, so being able to mark the <coughs> new reef whilst fishing at the same time is that what I, I look at. Oh, 100%. Yeah. I, I found so many new reefs and, and marked my spots for fishing the next day from just trolling around with the downrigger. And uh, you always, you know, you, you jump from your mark sometimes, you go, oh, I've got this one, I've got, oh, I've got nothing in between. <laughs> but once you actually start going slow, you're like, oh my God, there's reef everywhere. You know, and um, so definitely downrigging is, is, is good to cruise around. It's, it's not a very good two-person sport. 
you know, because you've, <laughs> you've only got one rod out. You've got two downriggers. Yeah. Oh, have you got down, two yeah. downriggers? Yeah. Um, but yeah, yeah, d d definitely downrigging for, for snapper is, is, would have to be up there with one of my favourite things to do. Um, I don't fish in close a lot. Um, as, as we would all know, you know, when you're fishing in close, you'll just set up your drift and then, oh, there's somebody next to me now. <laughs> you know, oh, there's somebody there. Somebody's jumping on the back of your drift. And um, so I like to keep moving when I'm in close. And, uh, and so that's why I'll downrig it when I'm in close mostly. Um, and I'll use any lures like that to, to a little bit bigger. Um, any of these size. Um, I normally like it to dive probably around the three metres um, below the, the bomb of the downrigger. Um, and <clears throat> probably won't go into too much how to use uh, it if not uh, too so many people use it, but, but I I'd normally have the lure out probably about 20 or 30 metres. Um, I'll either put it in the, the clip or I'll put a rubber band around my line. And the reason for that is so when the fish grabs it, they pull off and the, the rubber band stretches and then snaps. So I've sort of set the hooks already. Um, but yeah, I, I, I'll have a muck around for a snapper on plastics out the front early. And I might get a couple of fish, I might not even get a fish. And then I'll start down rigging it and I'll, I'll, I don't know, just catch fish all day long. Right, and um, How fast are you just in gear, pretty much. Really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Just, just, just in gear, which is probably about two knots or something. Two knots max. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, um, so you can pull the lure out of the, out of the band as well. Yeah, yeah. Is it just the standard size pole on the bottom. Yeah, I, I, I just have a ten pound. Ten I, pound. I just use ten pound. Yeah. Um, I've, I've had braid on my downrigger. Yeah. Uh, my current downrigger has wire on it. Um, I don't really find the difference between the two. Okay. Um, but I normally would normally have my lure running um, around that 10 metres off the bottom again. Right? Uh, I don't go any closer because you're going to get Sergeant Baker and, and all this little crap's going to come, and get, come up and get it. So I just always hang around that 10, even 15 metres off the bottom and then just troll around with that. And uh, yeah, yeah it's, 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 it's deadly. Yeah, for those who don't have downriggers, so well, it's, just a, it's an arm with a big handle on it and a, and a spool. And you wind that handle back, and the, um, the, at the end of the, of the cable is a, um, about a 10 pound ball. There's a little eye on the front, eye on the back. The eye on the front you clip onto your downrigger. The eye on the back, I just run a little bit of an inch of line cord, actually. A little thin stuff, maybe that long. Um, I put a rubber band on my line, like Jason, so I drop my line out 20 metres. Um, then I uh, just put the rod in the rod holder, set the drag, obviously, pull the line down, put a rubber band on it, and just do a little half inch on the, on the inch of line cord. Then wind the handle back and lower my balls. The rod now is in free spool, and you just kind of keep it. Overheads is pretty dumb, right? Yeah, right. yeah. But um, and then I just uh, let the line out, and they both go down together. That your line's going down with the ball on the rod and on the, the downrigger. And when you're at the depth, so say we're trolling 24s, it's like 38, 42 meters deep, and we're trolling at about 20. 28 max, but uh, generally around about yeah, 25 to 25 to 28. I don't know you, Jess, but that's it. Well, that's it. You've got six metres of, of the actual lure and line coming off the back of that. Uh, 20 metres. 20 metres of. 20 metres. 20 metres of, of. Put the lure out first. Yep. And then grab the line and put the rubber band on it. Yep. And then do the half inch with the inch of line cord, then drop it down together. Yeah, right, right, right. And then when you hit the right, right depth, you a little depth gauge on the downrigger. Yep. Uh, then you just tie the handle and, and lock mm -hmm. the down the ball into place and then just take the stack up on your rod so the rod really loads up yeah and it's quite um reverse so when you get the fish hits it normally you think the rod will pull down but actually goes loose and oh, yeah. so you get to quickly okay. grab the right of the rod holder and you know, get the weight on it as quickly as you can yeah. and then it's on okay. yeah so the rod just goes pops up yeah. but the fish is actually on yeah, cool. yeah. 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 that's what you find so. <laughs> What's the shallowest you can down The shallowest? Yeah, well, oh, it's just really oh, shallow. Well, 10 metres yeah. if you wanted to. Yeah. Yeah, but what, yeah. what's practical? Uh, practical is probably, um, do you get the biggest snapper on the bait reefs? We just don't know. They're there quite consistently, so it might get juice as well. It's probably a bigger lure, by the way. But um, generally speaking, um, the 18 fathom reefs probably going to be practical out to 36s. Yeah. Yeah. 
especially if the day's really rough on that particular day, I, I might start from the 12s even, mm. you know, if you just don't want to get bashed all the way out. So, mm. um, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll chuck them into the 12s and you've just got to keep an eye on your depth um, to, to make sure you lift the, the ball up or down just to allow for the reef and just try and stay in that, that zone where you want to be. Yeah. yeah. That's great. Great opportunity to map your, map your reef head. Yeah, yeah, you're going to get all your mackerel spots. Any more questions for Jason or so? We might just play a video if you don't mind, Jace. I've, I've got a video yeah, of Jace yeah. here, if he doesn't mind. Um, and he, everything said tonight is pretty well on this. The and, truth. <laughs> and, and Jack will stop it if you want any questions. We'll quickly stop it and Jace can answer your questions. Yeah, if there's any questions, Sorry, whatever, yeah. Yeah. And uh, please feel free to. Oh, do you want me to turn the lights off, Jack? Oh, yeah, please. Yeah. Sorry, Jace. Oh, yeah, just see it. Thank you, sir. Oh, yeah, you see. Sorry, I didn't get the seat. Yeah, but it is. Have a drink of water. I'll just turn this off, too, I think. I get bored when I'm fishing, so I'll do this little video. They're good videos, man. I'll do terrible ones. Jason Heller. H-E-L-L-E-R. Oh, wow. It should get clearer than that too, by the way, guys. Yeah, so this is my uh, my method for uh, soft plastics. Um, oh, nice. Just using a three quarter ounce jig head. I'm in about sixty odd meters of water. Thirty pound main and thirty pound YGK. Is that clear down uh, the back there, guys? Yeah, yeah, so yeah, it's incrementally good. coloured, so I know exactly which depth my lure is at. Um, just a little Abu Garcia with a mm -hmm. dive Alexa. No one sees it Way below your lure that 
they want it. So I know I'm right in the fish's face and they're not taking it. I like to take it away from them and give it a little bit of an erratic action and then drop it back to them. As if they've had their chance and they think they're going to miss out. And you quickly rip it away. Give it a bit of an erratic thing like an injured bait fish. Then drop it back to them. And a lot of times, because they thought they missed out the first time, they'll grab it. I'm just going to be watching line, all the sound of you know, GPS and watching the, the line. Just to try and get that, that, uh, that line down either straight up and down or maybe like a nice little 10, 15 degree angle. See my lure at 40 metres at the moment. I'm at about 58 metres. Get you back down the bottom, Jess? No, no. I can't tell you the spot, but uh, <laughs> I, I, I normally get one or two fish oh, off the fish. spot, and then that's it. They shut down. It's a really little isolated spot. There's no reef, like quite a few k's around. Mm. Okay. Yeah. But they always seem to be like around that 65 to 70 centimetre fish. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just trying to see the marks in the background. It's a bit blurry. So. Yeah, no, no, no. I, 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 I made sure I had a... So that's another lure that was just too big for what I wanted to use it for, so I just bit the head off it. It doesn't even look pretty on there. That's it. Close the engine. Too much of the lights back on. Don't like it. Thanks, mate. But, but definitely all of those, those that, that, that erratic, well, they didn't, I didn't get any hookups when I was doing it, but, but definitely those, those erratic <coughs> head shakes and they're just letting it free fall definitely get bites. You know, especially if you see a fish there and you're not getting the bite. I'd definitely love to just like just either just whack it really super hard and just Thanks wind so. it away like five or ten meters and then just bang open the bail arm and just let it walk back down again. And so many times I just come up and I just grab it. So it's sort of after that, I suppose it just excites me a bit or something like that. But obviously it doesn't happen every time because it's fishing. Mm. It's fishing. Any questions for Jason about it all guys? I did for you last week. H-E-L-L-E-R. Yeah, you haven't got a boat, we need to get another one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No boat. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> 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 Jason's one of those good fish, I could do everything. So I've been, every fish and Jason, mackerel, flatties, snapper, everything, we've done it all together. Yeah. Pretty good. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. So he knows what he's doing, Sometimes. I'm sure you. Sometimes. What's your YouTube? Oh. Yeah, you YouTube channel? No. Uh, just Instagram. Just Instagram. <laughs> yeah, oh, he's shy. Shy. <laughs> shy. Yeah. But are you on um, yes, on Facebook anyhow? Yeah, on, on Facebook and Instagram. But I, yeah, so I haven't been doing much on there since I haven't had the boat for the last last bit. But there's there some good videos through there on boat rigging and, and other snapper stuff and, and all that sort of stuff too. Which is, mm. There's some good little bits of yeah, stuff on there. Yeah, they're all pretty good. Bitcoin for. Except Bitcoin for Charles. Oh, I do. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yes, I do. Just go on the phone and give me one. Yeah. If the stock's uh, going down, I'll be able to get a boat. Yeah. <laughs> 
Uh, very good, thank you, Jason. Very good, mate. Very good. So, so yeah, thank you. Very good. Um, so, guys, I can't really add much to what you've just talked about, bar the size. That's it. So, someone asked before about the size per depth that you're in. Generally, I work at a golden rule for me is that the depth in meters is the minimum in grams. Does that make sense? So 50 meters, 50 grams, 100 meters, 100 grams, you know, and I'll add up to double of that depth of that amount. So in 20 meters, I use 20 grams, but I might use 40 grams max if it's a bit windy or whatever it might be. And it generally works out pretty spot on. Mm. And is that both for plastic as well as the? Ah uh, no, or? that's uh strictly for the rubber jigs and the and the yeah. uh, slow pitch jigs. For the jig heads. Um, it's a hard one. Uh, jig heads sort of, you try and always get away with, like even at the 50 fathoms, I'm using one ounce. You know, and 36 I use one ounce, actually use three quarter of a, yeah, yeah, like yeah. one ounce. Yeah. There's, there's only seven grams, you can see, hardly see the difference, you know. Um, one thing I do, do it, I don't normally use any bigger than one ounce, but I do add I sinkers to it, like a Lumo sinker. So if, if you're, and I've done, it, the same uh, quality of bike, same quality of everything. I don't know if you've tried this yet, but when you get those windy days or strong current, um, even I'll even use that to two or three ounce on top of my one ounce jig here at the 50s, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And just gets it straight down, but. Um, just and rolling, rolling it down yeah, the top of the Straight on top of the jig head. Yeah, yeah. Straight on top. And uh, it doesn't make any difference, but it's, a, it's an easy fix with. Because a, a big jig head, as far as I'm concerned, if you, the ones we do have, they have massive hooks. Like I know we use big hooks, I use six and seven and two, especially on the seven inch uh, tails. But um, I just can't get myself to use an eight o or ten o hook for snapper or pearlies, whatever. You know? So just add the weight on the head to the top of it, and it works really well. And it's a quick fix. Um, other than that, um, the rubber jigs I like to use around that sort of eighty to one twenty out of the fifties. We've been doing really well on one twenty grams. Um, it might be one twenty going around. I'm not sure. Uh, 120 is that size, actually, I'll pass it around. Thanks, Jess. Um, on the pearl, is, I was get Jack to talk about it before, but he just had to pop out for a sec. But um, you get... Go on. <laughs> where we get our pearl perch, we get good snapper as well. So for any of those who come to the pearl perch talk we did that time, um, we fished in about 120 metres right there last Monday, last week, before that storm was on Tuesday, Monday. And um, we get we got an 82, um, 77, and a few couple of 60s. Uh, all on those jigs when we were um, fishing for pearls. Yeah. The snapper as well. So um, the snapper, um, I obviously, obviously, you know, guys, you guys know there's a closure next month, right? Yeah. So we've got three weeks to closure. Um, it's on the 15th of July to the 15th of August, midnight. And um, we can't go chase pearlies or, or snapper during that time. Um, last year we. We've jigged all the same sort of stuff, we just jigged for kings, simple as that. And for any other stuff, we had to throw it back, and that, which is a bit painful. We got some good, at least a good, good snapper. Yeah, yeah, slow oh. pitch too, yeah. Okay. Like, it, um, no, actually, I, I lie there. Um, we fish faster and we fish yeah. longer, um, right. only because we don't want to try and catch the pearlies and snapper. Yeah, yeah. During that period, during that yeah. period, yeah. Sort of up and the but when you slow pitch jigging, like the other day, we got, uh, we got two kings around about 10 kilos. Is that the same about the 50s or? That was at the 50s. That, yeah. that was just outside the 50s. That was last Monday. Okay. Um, or, and the slow pitch jigs. We're jigging for pearlies, but we've got the kings as well. Yeah. Mm. So, anyhow, um, but there's plenty of kings at the moment, so they're just starting. But with the snapper, the ice, there's no difference, Jay said, on, on everything. So, yeah. I mean, the, the snapper close season is always a. I mean, it's, it's a bugger, but it's good also. But I always find <clears throat> last year it was, it was a good opportunity to start targeting um, your cobia and your dewies as well, you know. So at least you're almost forced now yeah. to, to actually mm, change. Yeah, to actually special try and specialise in, in, in those couple of fish for that for that month at least. Anyway, yeah. we did the same last year and uh, concentrated everyone on to get into the kings. Oh yeah, and yeah, uh, yeah. it was really good. And um, the only problem is the guys that fished in close a little bit left out because obviously it's mainly snapper and close right so um target jewies um cobia live bait more or um or try jigging but just um change your thinking and i'll just pass that around to link that's how i do it so far. but i use the paddle tail first because i do find paddle tails yeah, yeah, yeah. on the fall maybe better 
Um, yep. But if it's not working, we just do that. Yeah, and it works really well. Still good action. Um, but yeah, so for those of you fishing close during the closure, my suggestion would be um, definitely either you go live baiting or um, you just uh, try and get a bit further <laughs> if you can. Yeah, there are quite a few kingies on the 36s too on the back side of 36s, not the not the top. They're on the edge on the, and on the back where the pearlies are. That's where you get kingies. The kingies I think feed on the pearlies actually. Yeah. Mm. Oh, 50s is by far the best, yeah. yeah. That's right, yeah. So, But in the next three weeks, go hard on the snapper as much as you can and the pearlies. It's very good out there at the moment, just the weather's crap. That's the problem. Yeah, Jack, can we add to when we jig with the metals and the jig in these things? Um, the, the kingies? Oh, pearlies. No, it tastes good. What? Okay, I'm happy to swap. Uh, I'm happy to swap. I'll give you my Sergeant Baker. Sorry, guys. So with the bait, uh, with the um, Sorry, dude. jigs, I'd say like, like um, Jason said, to like slow pitch, like small turns, and like if you get a hit, I'd say like do like real quick turns. So it looks like the like the jigs like an actual bait. Trying so to flee. Like yeah. 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 Just like real small jigs, like trying to escape from the fish. And yeah, most of the time you either get a hit or you just drop back down and try and get the fish again. I guess yeah. So, so Jack's my son. So since Jack's a little boy, he hates using bait. He just jigs, jigs, jigs. Doesn't matter in twenty meters or five hundred meters, he jigs. That's all he does. And uh, he knows it very well. And um, and he's learnt how each fish likes to attack the jigs a lot of the way, so he's done really well and king is snapper, pearlies, doesn't matter. But uh, it's just a matter of, as he said, understanding how the bite is and then that's the way you're going to emulate so that shits action. So he shits you. Sometimes. <laughs> he did the other day. Yeah. That has, because I think I told the story to some of you guys the other day here, but the other day we went out and caught that snapper, it was 80, yeah, he got 82, yeah. and he, um, he did want a flight line, he has bait fish. And I said, Jack, there's no jigs, in, no, nothing in the boat. And then he found one of those um, Pat Noster feathered things, you know, like a snapper snatcher. He said, That's the closest thing to jig, Dad, I'll use that. And then he just borrowed a little piss ass piece of pilcher tallet about that size and chucked it on one of the hooks. And I'm float line, I'm trying my hardest, and he pulls in an 82 centimeter on this <laughs> jig. <laughs> yeah. Anyhow, that's the way it goes. T tin ass. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Jack's, Jack's tackle. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that's all good. But um, but guys, just um, try and do. Jason's been extremely uh, thorough on what he talked about tonight. If you do that, you will get fish. And if you're not doing, if you are already doing some of that, and you're not getting fish. Just try backing up. Try watching your sounder. Watching. Uh, it's really important on this party. I was going to show you this real quickly, but. Um, and some of you want to see this last time, but I'm sorry for watching it again. But I know Jason's sound, they had like the fuzzy stuff, that's why I find the bigger fish are on, is above the, the not like a gravel or firm, where it might be out, away from the pinnacle. You will get bigger fish up on the bait as well, um, and you'll get maybe stuff something like that. So those three marks there are those three marks there, sort of thing. Yeah. And, um, and that zoomed out to 150 metres, so I'm looking at that. It's really important that you guys understand the drift and Jack, uh, J Jason kept on emphasizing it as well. But if your drift is, um, if your marks are like that and you're gonna drift this way, so you gotta work out well, where do I go? So that's your, one of your, your three favorite spots. And normally you drift that way from the Northwest, but this day it's going northerly or Northeast. You'll need to just start over here and have a run through this way here maybe. That's the way you're gonna drift. And then um, if you don't get anything, do the next run through here and the next run through here. And you just try and find out where it might be. Because they're only like 20 metres apart or 25 metres apart, those runs. If you're drifting really fast and, and that's only a little bit of ground you got, um, the more you go out, the more marks you put down. I, I run out of event marks and everything within about six months on my sound of it. I got thousands and thousands. But if you zoom that out to say a 300 metre window, those um, spots there, actually, those spots there. And now I think I'll, okay, I'll add another time. 
and I've got marks further up. So now, okay, instead of starting here, I'm going to start up here somewhere. Yeah, so the wind's blowing this way. So I get the drift right through all of that. So before I was only drifting there, that's it. But now I've got a lot bigger, more options, a more um, area to find. And the next drift, you go coming out a bit further, a bit further. So just um, watch your sound all the time, but watch your GPS, probably more important than your sound all the time. But you need to be on the mark, and it's so important knowing that that's about to come up here, and I'm here, so at that time I want to make sure my line's in the zone. I want to make sure everything's perfect, and I might need to pull myself over a little bit in the boat, or what it might be, electric if you've got the luxury, and um, and be right on the, on the money when you get to it, you know, because that's where the fish are going to be feeding and going to hit. And if you happen to get blown off course, and it's out here somewhere, and you get a hit here, you should put one of those little red marks straight on the screen. As soon as you hook up, I've got fish pulling this, I'm trying to touch the event icon mark at the same time. Because to me, that is so important that the next time I know exactly where I am. Let's get more fish, you know? Don't just drift off. At times, I must admit, I had, especially if I'm on my own, I'll see myself just pull away a little bit, which means, oh, the fish has pulled me over that way, or I've just turn the motor into neutral and I'll just start to drift with the wind, whatever it might be. So next time I'll come back and I'll just have a look around there. But um, try and put uh, an icon or a waypoint as soon as you hook up. And the next time you go out again, it's already in there and you, you know that's the spot. Yeah. And um, and just to, and I keep saying about numbers, understand your numbers where you are. Because those marks you've got, I've got the sheet here actually. So. I think where Jace was is... Yes. <laughs> so um, the top two, I don't think, oh, it might have been. Um, they're on the 36s, uh, just north of Seaway bit. And as I keep saying too on numbers, um, can, you can you explain that? Yeah, so each, each time. Uh, so it's 27, 28, 5, 1, 2. That's your number here. You can see that. So that's one thousandth of a mile. It's not in kilometres, it's in miles, okay? Nautical miles, by the way. So one nautical mile is 1.8 kilometres, approximately. So that's, 5, 1, 2 is about uh, 900 metres. So half a nautical mile is about 900 metres. Every time that clicks over to it gets up to 999 and goes to here. This will change, if you go south, this will change to a 9. Okay, it'll become 29. So now it becomes 0, 0, 0 again over here. Oops, sorry. 0, 0, 0. So that means um, when you click over to 9 and go 0, 0, from 8, 0, 0, 0, you've gone 1 nautical mile, which is 1.8 kilometres. And every time we go 60 miles, because it's their minutes and that clicks over to if you go south it goes from say you're 2700 and you get up to 59999 it won't go to 60 here it clicks back to 0000, zero, 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 zero and that clicks up to 8. Does that make sense? <laughs> <laughs> so anyhow so Jace could say any number and I'll Oh, no, exactly what it is. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and and I, I have no idea with the numbers. I've never looked at them, yeah. they've rattled all these numbers up, and they mean nothing to me. Yeah. I've just had like hundreds of marks on my thing, and that sort of tells a picture for me. So, right. as, yeah, Doug, yeah. as Doug said, yeah. you know, I, just, I don't have any names yeah. or anything. I don't call this Johnny's spot or They're whatever. They're just numbers. They're just numbers. It's just whatever <laughs> number comes up next, I just put another mark. So, yeah. when I go to that general area, I just see all of these marks, and it sort of tells a bit of a picture for me. Probably the one thing I do um, is each season I change to a different icon. Good. So, so when you come to snapper season the next time or mackerel season the next time, and you now you start using a green cross, yeah. you know that all of those marks you've been putting in this year yeah. are relevant to what's happening at the moment. So, oh, I've been seeing bagel around here, and yeah. so rather than just doing another number, yeah, I just change to a different icon for each sort of season. Um, which is really helpful. Um, when you get to this sort of status here, that we've got lots of marks on the screen and you've added marks, um, each time the wind changes, as I said earlier, or the drift becomes faster, quite often you'll 
you'll zoom in or you go off the screen, um, and you normally have a bottom point and a start point on your drift. And then you know in between is refill or whatever, what Jay said is a yeah. coming up. So that's just, you don't waste some time going past it. But when you do, when you do sometimes do a longer drift, all of a sudden you find a better spot yeah, again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so when you zoom that in again and make that bigger, there'll be another mark down here somewhere and that now becomes your bottom mark again. So it keeps expanding. And just keep expanding, expanding. But I leave all the lines on so I know exactly my drift. Mm. And if I'm running, I change my colours all the time. Mate. Yeah. Every time I go out, or maybe in a season, I'll change from um, black to blue or black to yellow. And I know the yellow lines when I was out there, okay, that's in last winter if it was. So yeah, right, right. I got colours to change. But most, most sounds these days in GPS are pretty good. They'll, they'll store a lot of memory. So you can have lots and lots and lots and lots of tracks to the point he says, you've got no, no, no points left. Uh, waypoints are a problem, though, for me, uh, and Nikons, but tracks are good. So, um, yeah, just keep storing as much as you can. But get back to these marks here, guys. I won't, I won't talk um, to confuse the numbers, then I'll just tell where we are. So the first two were on the 36s. The next three, we are on the outside edge of the 36s, and we are south of the seaway by about... Uh, you're pro probably off, probably off uh, Main Beach area, and maybe um, down towards Miami. So... <laughs> The next one down, 280540, 44. So those ones there, you are on the first one, the 28. That should be 052, folks. So if it's missing, if it's only got one number between up to 28 or 27, only one number, you've got to put a zero in front of it, okay? This is the way the GPS goes. Um, but that one there is called 42,000. So that's the 42,000 reef. Which is um, off about sort of Burley nearly, off Burley Heads. Um, and then the next couple are back up north. So 2742, you're off Jumping Pin. And that's where the Kingies are in the Snapper. We've got the Snapper the other day in that area. Um, the next one is a few miles south of there and out a bit deeper. It's probably in about 90 metres, I'd say. <laughs> the next one's similar. 28-0, that should have another zero there, so that's 28 zero, zero. That's where we get all the kings in September, October. It's also a great time for snapper there at the moment. Same with the one next to it, should be 28 zero, one. Okay, That's also on the 50s east. Um, the next one is the traps, 28 zero, 2 is always a trap marker floats around there. They're not faz, they're traps. 27-56-770, uh, that's straight out from the seaway and that is in about... Uh, um, well, it's where we got that snap the other day. <laughs> in that area. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. So the, tw the two 2756s and the 2757 are all on the same ridge of pinnacles and they're around about sort of uh, 500 metres from top to bottom, sort of thing. And a little bit of an angle heading southeast to the last 57. Uh, 59. The 259, 359 marks, um, that's sort of your focus reef and a bit further east of focus reef um, in close. Good snap it in there, guys. Um, the next one, 28, should be 00 and 31. That's um, sort of off Q1, but on the 24s, on the outside edge of the 24s. And the next three or four, 2734 down to 2741, are all northeast of Jumping Pin. Some are right up, so that 27.34 and 153.35 is on uh, the cathedrals, the Easy Cathedral Reef, which is um, northern end of the 36s up, up at Point Lookout, towards Point Lookout. And the one just below us is south of it, and go down down. Uh, 27.44, second bottom line, that's straight out from the pin bar. Okay, and 27.46 is just a bit south of the pin bar. And so is the next one, and 27, 48, 37, those two last ones. Um, that is very popular snapper spot, and pearl perch spot, and king spot. Uh, great for jigs there, all this is what we're talking about tonight. That's sort of halfway up South Stratty, heading towards Jumping Pin on the back side of the 36s that I keep talking about. Okay. They're all good marks, and they're all for my... I have two lots of uh, marks on my Navionics app. I have two Navionics ones. One's B 
B and A grade, and one's A plus. Okay? The A plus. <laughs> the A plus I never do, uh, what do they call it? Um, communities share on ed edits or something. We share with everyone else. You don't have to see that one. This one, <laughs> this one on this side, you get, might get to see. You see a few Doug's pearlies, Doug's stuff. So, what I want to know is what are these from? Oh, uh, yeah, well, <laughs> they're a conglomerate of both, actually. Um, but they are, most of these are off my good one, actually. So, you guys make the effort to come tonight, so I'll give the effort back to you, okay? But you've got to catch fish. You can leave the horse to water, you've got to make a drink, though. <laughs> He's still got to catch fish. I want to know where the young fellow's marked up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, he's, he's always in the boat with me, so. Yeah. Oh, no, sometimes he's been with Jace, hasn't he? Yeah. Jace's been, yeah, Jace's been a couple yeah. of times, yeah. Yeah. Did, would you take the Mark Seddy GPS when you sold the boat, or did someone lucky get it? No, I took them out, and the guy oh. was really upset. And, uh, that's the only reason why I didn't buy it. I just dropped 10 grand. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I kept them all. Yeah. I thought I lost them all. I lost half of them. No way. Well. I lost everything from Mermaid South. Oh. Yeah. I got some. Because I got, yeah, I got my sound and I was transferring over onto my phone and doing something and it just, it was gone. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. If I had lost them north, I would have been very upset. Oh. You guys are so lucky. Like, back in my day, with my dad, this guy got sell bar, I was a kid, like Jack's age. And I'm um, oh, sorry, young adult. And uh, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and um, it was so hard. Like we had just landmarks, right? And um, there wasn't many as big high rises. It's all little ones, so nothing was above the mountain range. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. It was just like you had to try and line up a little hill halfway up the mountain. <laughs> um, and then look to the east. We used to fish mainly the jumping area, and they always was seen to be burning sugarcane when we used to go out at that time. So you couldn't see anything except smoke. And it was really difficult and I would have probably bet my nuts a thousand times that there was only a couple of spots off the Gold Coast that had reef on it and the rest of sand. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't until the advent of GPS that I realised that there is so much reef and every time we go out we find new spots and a lot of people, that a lot of spots I had found many years ago that were a little bit secret, now a lot of people know about them. But I don't mind because I now have other new spots because I've put the time in to find new spots. So um, if we go out and we get a few pearlies or king, uh, snapper or whatever it might be, we get enough for a feed or a baglin or whatever it might be, and then we, um, we spend the, the next two or three hours looking around new spots and trying new spots. And it's such a buzz because you haven't fished those areas before. Mm. And uh, I'd suggest to all you guys to look around where you are, even if, where your spot is, look around there. Just okay. zoom into a 10 metre window and just, just go looking around. Chuck a lure at one. Like that's oh, so many times Jack yeah. we've been out. So like sometimes we've had like a bit of a shitty day mm. and got a few fish and then we've just said, I guess go looking, so we go looking and or we just take off and we I always watch the sounder and don't go too fast because I can watch the sounder. And then um, all of a sudden it'll just all of a sudden come like that, or there'll be buzz on the bottom and go back around and say, let's have a drop here, drop mm. down. It's holy wow, it's just like untouched. And that has happened rather be in 40 metres or in, in 300 metres, 350. It's, we're always finding new spots. And there's endless amounts of spots. And then now you've got the bloody relief shading and uh, and everything yeah. else, you know, CMAP reveal and that. It's a whole new world again. So we've been looking at using cheating a bit, but using their little indentations and going to have a look and drop them down. And it's what we drove over the top of even at slow speeds, it didn't really take much notice because on the old, um, um, uh, we call it the little contours, and even with the con contour, the better, better contour shading, oh, contour, sorry, um, before, it, it didn't show half the stuff that's out there, but the cement reveal and the other um, really shading, they show these little ridges or little dark spots, and what you drove over for, say, 20 knots, because it wasn't nothing on the on the contours, all of a sudden there's a 20 metre drop in, in 150 metres deep, it might go from 150 down to 170, and, come back up again, I've never knew that existed, but it's always been there. You drop down, it's just like wham, bam, you're on straight away, you know. So, um, yeah, give what it a shot. What app do you find that on? Um, it's on your, if you got, I'd suggest strongly, all you guys put Navionics on your phone. Yeah. Navionics app. It's about 37 bucks a year, it's the best investment you'll ever do in your life. And it'll save you probably that in fuel the first time you go out. Um, but the, it's all on that, mate. So, on, yeah, and when you go to that, I can't do it, it's, it's on, I guess. It's on, it's on the um, um, app on my phone, but um, you'll have on there, um, I 
can't remember the first one's called something shading. Oh, the relief shading's on the right, I think, and the left side is contour shading or something like that. The left side is contour shading. So the one on the left, which is a little blue picture, when you go down to map options, then you go down to, the, to that section. Uh, the one on the left is like sub 100 metres in most areas, or 120 metres. And the one on the right, the relief, relief shading, which is like a coloured picture, that one's everything out to the deep that shows where you have canyons and ravines and anything over sort of 100 metres, 120 metres. Um, and it's the same as a map you spend $400 for for your GPS, but it's 30 something bucks. And they work also, it's good for new areas, like we, we went to Spain's last year, I think it was, and um, so I downloaded the app and then you can, yeah, you can actually download the, the maps onto your phone, so you can yeah, that's right. choose certain that's selections. Right. So yeah. when we went to Spain, like you don't have telephone coverage, but you can see your boat actually on there, yeah. uh, so it must work on satellite or something. It works on satellite only, yeah. And, uh, and, and, and use it wherever, yeah. That's right, and uh, it, so you have a, definitely have it plugged into a other battery pack or into a cigarette lighter or something like that to charge your phone all the time. But definitely um, a really good investment as Jay said, it could be anywhere in the Pacific and it, and it works fine, it doesn't work on down mm. there. And um, the other thing too is it will just save you so much and you can do so many things. You can like take a picture and it records everything for you on that day on the picture. You can put your track on and, and save your track for the whole day and see where you've been everywhere. And then you can replay the track and with the time and, and the speed you're doing and everything, it shows you how your drift was and yeah, it's just an incredible feature for 37 bucks. So it's called Navionics uh, Boating, I think it's called, Australia. So that's one thing. Um, you know about that, uh, you know about that, that that's the hard ones. <laughs> and, uh, and lures wise, um, there's a lot of, like Jay said before, they're so confusing and so many different techniques and, and styles, but um, at the end of the day, you just, you, you'll have your favourite I don't know Jay his favourite three or four of each style, probably those. Yeah, so yeah, 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 like yeah, color yeah, wise yeah, and, yeah, and size yeah, wise, yeah, yeah, yeah. And um, and even if you just got that in your kitty, that's that's that's, that's all you need. And we got so many of our customers that don't take bait anymore; they just take lures. That's it. And the problem we do that actually mm -hmm. inside we do a lot too. And um, you you just catch sometimes more fish than you do on bait. It's very very good. It's a different technique. And it's very clean fishing. Yes. And it's very active because you actually you're working it all the time, except for the except for that stuff. Yeah. <laughs> That's all you just stick it right on. Yeah. yeah. But um, I still work those two though. Yeah. I do Jay, work those. So do you guys have like that out and then use the throwing soft bass yeah. as well? Or you just got a couple of rods out? Uh, no, I, if, if I fish by myself, mm. I'll have I'll have an octa jig out to one side and I'll be plenty mm. fishing on the other side. Yeah. Yeah, but, but if there's a, if there's two of us on a, on the boat, we just concentrate on just just one each. Yeah. 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 It's, yeah. If there's three of us yeah. or two of us bait fishing jack jig, and I still have an octa jig out as well. Yeah. yeah. So instead of float lining, I just put that out and I will bottom fish say out fifties or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. So the octa jigs just sit down there. Just it just the, you got to use a soft tip rod though. Something like your bait runner type rod or whatever it might be. <coughs> yeah, this one here, they just load up themselves and they're on, you know. So what sort, what's the, like the heaviest rod or the lightest rod you use? Um, so the lightest rod I use in close is like my flatty gear, which is like 15 yeah, right. pound. Yeah. Um, but I use those on the on the Lukamoku type rods, the really soft tip ones. Oh, Actually, nice it's a nice first prizes one. This is, a, this is, I think, rated to about 15 to 20 pounds, but very, very soft. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's so much fun when you're fishing on the um, you, you 24s. Good with that. Yeah, and run a full 4,000. Yeah, yeah. I've got one of them called Sunday Fish. It's ridiculous. It's and we've got it's about like 10 problem. of them <laughs> across the range. Um, and, yeah, I know, I know. But I can, I can pull pretty hard on this, I can assure you. Um, but this with like 15 or 20 pound line, it's absolutely perfect with about a 4,000 size reel. Yeah, wow. And I'm using jigs from, I like a lot of that 15 gram, 20 gram inside the 24s and this type of thing. And it's so sensitive and so, you just see everything. You see, like Jay said, you mm. see the knock, you see the feel, you, you like see the tip and uh, very, very good. Um, we also use a float line for spotting for everything. Of course, yeah. 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 Um, but that's gonna be given away tonight. Probably one of the important things I actually forgot to mention as well, which I don't know if everyone does, but when I'm out on that 36 fathom uh, range, I'll, I'll go to custom on the, the depths, and so I'll only be looking at, say, 40 to 65 metres. Mm -hmm. 
and it's it's different to zooming in. You know, when you're zooming in, it sort of just increases the picture that you're already looking at. But when you're actually going to a custom range and you just look, say, from 40 to 60, you actually get like that 40 to 60. So the, the, the quality is a lot better, and you, you'll see the reef come out, and you'll see the fish more. Um, so yeah, so don't. Kind of chirp on that. Like, is it, is it always like low chirp for that? No, um, no, just just no, high frequency. Well, well, 80, 83 kilo, uh, 83, 83 kilos. Yeah. 83 is it? Yeah, yeah, yeah and 200. Right. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. High frequency. But, but most of them, I mean, depending on the day, the day is different sometimes. So sometimes you just jump from depending on the, the wind and the current and everything. Yeah. And the water quality as well, because the, the, the dirtier the water is and the more crap you got in the water, the more the more shit you'll get coming back. So so you, sometimes you want to go to a narrower screen. Yep. You know, and then you you block a lot of that out. Um, if if you're locked in in a depth like in the old days, it was up a little bit lower, and you put it in, the the picture's not constantly changing, the depth's changing, where it looks like it's flat all the time, even though you got yeah. rises and stuff. Yeah. It it stays the same, but the picture inside alters. Yeah. So what you see is true, like Jace is saying. That's mm -hmm. right. Yeah. Very good. Yeah. Okay. Um, anything else for us? Okay, you're gonna get there and smack him. Oh, Jay, Jack, yeah, Jack, <laughs> secret assassin. He doesn't say much. Bit of cheeky one. Oh, better at fishing. Him or his brother. No, I think go out with Paul. I just say I'll probably say Dad. Yeah. Paul's Paul is a good fisherman. Go the jig. He's a go-getter. Go the jig. But he's not. Oh. <laughs> But he's not as good. <laughs> Sorry, Paul. <laughs> Got a bit to learn yet, mate. <laughs> uh, he's eight years younger, so he's eight years behind. Yeah, that's, yeah. On, that's on Channel 7 tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. They're only saying that because the old man's in the room. Right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, Paul is a good fisherman, though. He's a good fisherman. And we... Because... Our mum and dad were crazy fishers, so we learned everything from Estuary Beach and offshore and, and everything when we were little kids, you know, and, uh, and just kept on going. And it's always been the Gold Coast, that's all we know is the Gold Coast. Oh, we know everywhere, but we know the Gold Coast mainly. Yeah. That's our back, our back door. Yeah, step. Okay. Well, I think we'll do the, do the competition draw. So, guys, just um, as you know, everything's 30 percent off except for reels, they're best price online, and that'll run to our next seminar, which is our, only next week. So, uh, but if you want to pick something up in a few weeks' time, you're welcome to um, just come, just mention it at the seminar, and we'll do the deal for you. Okay. So, first price tonight, we've got about, uh, I think it's nearly 150 bucks for gear in there, plus the rods, that's about 400 and something bucks worth. And... and Jack and I had a talk tonight about well, how much to say, and Jack's doing very well. <laughs> <laughs> Just joking. Okay, so I'll tell Jack the number, he'll tell you the name. Number 14, Jack. Um, Alex Hudson. <laughs> I told you! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Why are you Serious? <laughs> oh, you got your light. Oh, you want it, mate? No, you're going to get it. No. <laughs> you want I told him myself. Shit. <laughs> you, did, you did well. You did well. So all the, all the jigs are. But, but he bought the ticket, so I said, I'll have to give it to you. I'm going to do yank on the end here. Oh, now I understand, Alex. Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so just fish like you're normal fishing. Like... <laughs> but don't <laughs> bend like that. That's how break rolls. Yeah? Just tell me. I'm going to stick it, man. <laughs> no, not too much. <laughs> okay, number two. So number two is about Thank 200 you bucks. Very much. You're welcome, mate. Good on you. Number two is about 200 bucks for the gear. Um, lots of different lures, lots of pink. Jack's, uh, Jason's favourite colour. Pink and white by far in lures, colours are very hard to beat. Um, natural colours would be number three. Um, Matthew? Number four. Yeah. No, yeah. oh, you guys on a roll. These are my cousins, guys. Just we haven't met. Them. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. Good on you, mate. Thanks. I'll do this one. Yeah. <laughs> Try and get up this end of town. Um, and guys, thanks for coming along. Thanks so much to Jay. So, 
I haven't seen Jace for a while. You've worked so bloody hard. Number eight. Oh, Cooper McKenzie. Yeah. Well done, mate. <laughs> Finally. <laughs> uh, mate, you have got, I think, about 150 bucks or something like that worth it. Hey, buddy. Congratulations, mate. Cheers, mate. Okay, number four. So, you got any questions? We'll be downstairs for about to about nine guys. You're welcome to come down and ask us anything. And we got we're open for deal deal side too. Number nineteen. Um, Brian. Cool, well, well, uh, Brian. Well done, mate. Thanks, mate. Congratulations, buddy. Mate. Stockpile stuff without a boat. Sorry, Brian. I just have to do that, mate. Yeah. That's you, buddy. It's about a hundred bucks, mate. Eighty bucks. Yeah. Cheers, mate. Okay, next one. The Brian's been coming to all the seminars. He's getting the training ready for his boat. He's got a new boat coming. Oh, that's true. Ah, a couple of people close to his numbers up. Number 18. Um, oh, no 18. No 18. Redo. Oh, redo. Oh, redo. Okay, that's the fellow that didn't make it. Sorry, buddy. Sorry, mate. <laughs> um, <laughs> number 20. <laughs> That's incredible, isn't it? Yeah. 17, 18, 19, 20. Sean Charles. Sean, well done, buddy. Sean's a good bloke. <laughs> and he's learning lots too. I had a couple of guys come in, like just, I don't know if you, oh, you got the Mac tuner, sorry, Sean. I had a couple of guys in during the day who um, come to the seminar and also went out Friday and got some nice snapper as well. Good on you guys, so whoever you were during the day. Okay, last one, number six. Six prior prize, that is not number six, that is the number. And the number is 11. Um, Carl Gay. Carl, oh, well done, mate. Late time I get to the prize. Last one. Thanks, a lot. But thanks everyone for coming along. Um, our next seminar is on Squid, but it's already sold. I won't do the one on Squid. And, um, but you can watch it online. And then the one after that we're going to do, which will be towards the end of July. Is on Jewies, and I know yeah. Jace loves Jewies, so I might get Jace back if he wants to come back to yeah. Delicious. Delicious, <laughs> yeah. So, <laughs> but predominantly offshore Jewies, okay? Oh. That will be, uh, well, let's know the dates as that gets closer. Okay, thank you. We'll meet you downstairs. I'll go downstairs now as well. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Thanks, Jace. Yeah, you're right. I'll go downstairs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, 100%. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's, yeah, it's, it's just, it's, um, yeah, just, just a scent.